Los Angeles, city of the angels, filled with the glamour of movie stars, Brahman's Chinese theater, and home of all fairy tales come true, Disneyland. You can fly there with Delta for the low early bird or hourly bird fare of only $88. Delta has 11 jets a day to Los Angeles, including three non-stop royal service luncheon or dinner flights. Delta is ready when you are. That's it. That's the engineer on the right. First officer on the left. Third pilot behind. Ratcliffe, do you know him? No, I've never met him. Take off the Ratcliffe. I didn't. Cut out. Do you know Ivan? No, I haven't. Oh, I didn't know him. Well, that's the engineer. Steve, I don't know. And here comes the captain. Oh, Hello, sir. Come see you for a while. Engine officer class one. Yes, yes, true. We flew together once before. Yes, yes we have done. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's Ignacio Director. How do you do? See you back. You knew? Yes, I am. <laughs> First trip. So you haven't been out east before? No, I haven't. Well, it should be warmer anyway. The flight goes through to Delhi, but you leave it at Bahrain. Spend a night there, then on to Bombay in another aircraft. <laughs> The flight really starts here. First, the captain checks all the data which has been prepared for him and makes his final plan. What's the weather like? It's all right in Bahrain. Beirut, it's all right? He checks the weather at destination. Weather en route. It all looks fairly straightforward, doesn't it? Wind speeds and directions, visibility, runway conditions. He looks at the all-up weight and decides how much fuel to take. Yes, we take 57,000 load sheet or 57,000 load sheet. Piece by piece, you build up a complete mental picture of the journey before you go out to the aircraft. We'll get out to the airplane. I'll take Steve out and start the checks going. Yes, I'll be along in about 20 minutes. 50 minutes to take off. Less than an hour before this aircraft, with 112 passengers, will be on its way to India. When you're a first officer, and you've been flying for more than 15 years, today's flight probably won't seem much different from dozens of others. But when you're just going out for the first time as the third pilot of a VC-10, then it is different. It's something you've spent almost two years working up to. It started here, the College of Air Training, at a place called Hamble on the south coast of England. Getting in wasn't easy. Of all those who apply, only about one in ten is lucky enough to come here for 18 months training. One of the first things you do are these tests to find out what sort of person you are and how you behave under pressure. Everything's measured and evaluated. How quick are your reactions? How well can you concentrate? How consistent are you? They need to know all this and a lot more before they finally decide whether you're the sort of person that's likely to make a pilot. If you're lucky and you pass the tests, it's still some time before you have anything to do with an aeroplane. One of these chipmunks, single engine with a propeller at the front and two seats behind. Not exactly a VC-10, but ideal for a beginner. That moves the book, not standing on the flat. Good. All right, now we'll just run over the uh, various ancillaries in the cockpit. Uh, it's quite important you understand what these are, because uh, I won't be able to sort of lean forward from the back and do anything about it. One thing about any aircraft is that the controls are all basically the same. Rudder, elevators, ailerons. Every aircraft has them. 
a lap, go forward. Yep. I right, just lean forward and just put it on, you'll find it's quite easy. Just put it. That's the idea, and the brakes fully off. Now, down on the right hand side, if you look right down there, you can see a. Base. You learn where everything is and what it's for. Then you check it. Make sure it's working properly. Now, if you like to step in the cockpit, and we'll put the harness on. It takes quite a time to go through all the checks on a VC-10. There are more than 200 to be done before takeoff. 2332 to pass you, second one Japan American, follow him for 28 laps. Uh, checking on a right turn, through north. Right turn, check from the fourth side. Uh, flaps and flaps are selected. And running. Generators. Pairs, manual switch. Batteries are on. TRUs one and two on. HP cock. All run and lock. Booster pump. All on. Pressures. Everything's checked. Engine pressure stabilized. From the moment the aircraft starts to roll, you somehow view part of it. It's the same whatever it is. A BC-10 or a chipmunk. There we go. Keep it straight with that. Our nose is trying to swing. We're straightening it up. Yes. Stick going forward. Now the nose is coming down there. We're flying along. We're just about to come off now. Check back and hold it clear of the ground. Uh -huh. Your now first trip, away. you're only a passenger. Watching somebody else fly the airplane. 60, 70 knots. Hold the attitude steady here. Wings level. Yeah. Hold the rate of climb. Here is coming up. Even when you're airborne, you can't relax. You're still one of the crew, and you must watch everything that's going on. Three, two, one, throttle. Ninety-one percent. Ninety-one percent. Here we are, nicely settled. Passing about 700 feet now. Start our turn in. Go back to about 1,300 revs. Move it on the high side, take off a little bit of power, keep the nose in this attitude. The way you want to judge our approach, the attitude of the nose relates to the first hold. Ease off a bit more power, coming up to the boundary, all the power off, gently checking back. There's a nose coming up, ground getting a bit closer, stick coming back, 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 fully back. There, we're on the ground. First of all, considering the relationship between the resultant R of these currents and I, and between phi and theta, the relative bearing of the incoming radio wave. You do mathematics, aerodynamics, physics, electronics. There's more to being a pilot than just learning to fly. It's not all theory either. There's the practical side of radio communications and air traffic control. Sorting out one voice from another and learning to respond to your own particular call sign. British United Sierra Quebec, Wilco out. London radar, Speedbird 780 on the frequency. Good morning, Speedbird 780. Continue your climb to flight level 290, level by the Victor Romeo. Roger 693, continue your climb to flight level 270. Flying out of London, you take your instructions from air traffic controllers on the ground. Speedbird 780, Roger. Maintain flight level 290. Contact Trans Control 1355. Over. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Captain Lovelace speaking from the flight deck. We're now at 25,000 feet, climbing up to 33,000 feet en route for Bahrain. We have approximately six and a half hours to run. We go to Brindisi, Rhodes, Cyprus, Beirut, and Bahrain. Flying like this now, it's easy to forget how different it was at first. I'm 
Do this two or three times, and you begin to wonder whether you'll ever make a pilot. It's a problem in three dimensions. Keeping the aircraft straight and the wings level, at the same time as you're trying to lower it down to the ground. It's all a matter of coordination. Hands, feet, and eyes. Practice helps, and so does a little encouragement. Now that wasn't a bad circuit. Let's see how you get this base leg and approach this time. Get your correct speed. Everything you do goes into the log. It's a record of every flight you make, and how long it took. It's also a reminder of your first days in a chipmunk when the aircraft still seemed to have a will of its own, in spite of everything you did. In fact, he did quite a few things wrong, you know, chewing the rodeo was wrong, his head was rough and heart keeping was bad, and he landed, and you know, I think, that, that's it, good chop trip, you know, finish that. <laughs> and then Killian turned around to him and said, um, yes, yeah, quite a good trip. <laughs> but he said, I'm not a rubber stamp, you know. I like to look upon a chop test as a as if this chap were my son or my brother, you know. I think we're pretty, you know, pretty safe now. You get through here, you, you may, don't you? Yeah, I've seen that. About four out of every five students who go to Hamble do eventually get through. But there's always the thought that you could be one of those who don't. Well, this man, uh, in fact, you've already given him a change of instructor. Harry is yes, the second. Yes, Harry is the second one. Well, the first one found similar to the problem. Going back in his report, I see that he, he uh, had this, he had trouble on the chipmunk in the early stages. Well, I found that he had a general in inability to line up on the centre line of the runway on the finals. Um, this was a problem each time. And we've had similar problems to this before, because when they've gone to the OAC, they've been quite capable of carrying out an instrument approach. And then, of course, give, give them a visual approach, and this is where they have the problems, settling down. Quite suddenly, everything seems to come right. You find that you're flying the aeroplane instead of it flying you. And just when you've done three decent landings in a row, there's the moment you've been dreaming about for weeks. When your instructor gets out of the rear cockpit and tells you to stay where you are, you know what's coming. You're going to be allowed to take it up and fly it by yourself. You'll be watching. All you've got to do is take it up and bring it down again in one piece. That's all. Trim, two divisions forward. Plot of friction, not tight. Mixture rich, carbon cold. Fuel cock on, flaps up. We are clear for takeoff. Here we go. Stick back. Coming off now. You're off the ground. You're up. You're alone. It feels marvelous. In the back of your mind, there's still a familiar voice. 
Coming up to the boundary. Full power off. Now they're trying to hold it off the ground. Kenny's checking back. There's a nose coming up. Brown getting a bit closer. Spit coming back. 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 Fully back. There we're on the ground. You've made it. First time. That's going to cost you a few extra bob tonight. That was the day you really thought you'd become a pilot. Now, 18 months later, you realize how far you still had to go. You can forget about flying solo up here. But what you'll never forget is learning to control an aeroplane in any attitude. Tango Gatwick, Roger, continue at night levels, five zero in a hold. You can't do aerobatics in a link trainer. You can learn about flying blind on instruments on the ground. Right, now we have clearance to join the hold. It may not be the most exciting part of a pilot's training, but nor is it the easiest. It's when you move on to the larger, twin-engined aircraft that flying really becomes more of a science than an art. The Baron is not just that much bigger than a chipmunk, it's very much more complex. Instead of a cockpit, there's a flight deck, with two seats up front and three behind. And most of the instruments and radio aids you'd expect to find on an airliner. Advanced flying, they call it at Hamble. It's certainly different from what you've been used to. Apart from all the extra instruments, you have two engines instead of one. And the retractable landing gear to think about. The hours build up in your logbook. Hours solo, hours dual. Hours on instruments, hours at night. You do more than 75, all told, in the Baron. You learn about flight levels and control zones, about beacons and QFE and QNH and Balmet and 1013 millibars. You leave your home base with its familiar landmarks and fly to Ireland and the continent. Three hours out from London. Flight level 310. Airspeed 530 knots. Flying on across southern Europe towards the night. radar to keep a lookout for storm clouds ahead. There was no radar in the Baron, but you are still expected to fly accurately, even when you can't see out ahead. There are the instruments and voices in your headphones to guide you. You fly on a radio compass tuning onto the right beacon and listening in for ground stations. 
making sure you arrive where you want to be at Everything under control. Captain on the left, co-pilot on the right. And an automatic pilot in the middle to make life easier. Cruising at 31,000 feet. Listening in for the next control point. Well, we've got about 19 minutes to row, is that right? That's right, yeah, from now. Well, how about getting our young Mr. Ratcliffe to do some work? About time? Certainly. Uh, it's more than three hours since you took off from London. All that time, you've been sitting behind two men, watching them fly this aircraft without the slightest fuss or bother. Now, as third pilot, it's your job to step into the right-hand seat and take over as co-pilot, without anyone noticing the difference. It's only the first time you feel at all apprehensive. Like the day five months ago when you just left Hamburg. Nearly 250 hours in your logbook, and you were on the way to start earning a living. You were not the only one to start that day. Hello. Play with the camera. Thank you. Next one, please. Line, you become part of an organization. Not so much an individual as one of a team. It's calling you now. Nothing, speedbird 780, go ahead. You're never alone on the flight deck. Day or night, you're always in contact with someone outside. It may be a pilot in another aircraft you can hear over the radio. Or one of the ground stations along the route. There's always someone down below, listening and advising. Don't stand by. Okay. Speedbird 780, Roger, stand by. Tell him that uh, we'll maintain 370 as far as Beirut at least. Mm -hmm. We can go up to 41 after Beirut, but not before. Okay. The Queen East Speedbird 780, we're unable to climb this 410 this time. We're maintaining 370. Beirut below. First stop, Bahrain. Then Bombay. Uh, would you like to try that? Can we follow just for the second? When you first join an airline, it's not just a matter of putting on a uniform and flying off around the world. You get the uniform all right, but the closest you're likely to get to an aeroplane for several weeks is in the classroom. The red light and the bell tell you that an engine's on fire. It's back to school again, learning about systems and controls and procedures on the VC-10. And long before they'll let you near the real thing, there's the simulator. We are going to simulate this afternoon an abandoned takeoff at heavy weight on a wet runway. It cannot be stressed too strongly that the decision to abandon a takeoff at a speed close to V1 shouldn't be taken lightly. Well, we have uh, just then some rain on the runway, some water on the runway, and uh, a slight crossing table. Up front, the simulator is exactly like a real aeroplane. It's only behind where the passengers normally sit that it looks different. You will do the takeoff briefing now. Uh, engineer, Captain. But once you're in the pilot's seat, you forget it's just an elaborate box firmly fixed to the ground. Take over the throttles at V1. That's a wet runway, so we'll have the igniters on and engine out the icing. Understood? Okay, before takeoff, check. It looks and behaves just like a real aircraft. Noise, controls, movement, everything. And apart from flying normally, it can be made to reproduce just about every emergency anybody's likely to think of. Heat, going to high, and check. Speed of probe, all on. Probe check. And check. TPI, check four and a half. Rudder trim, zero. HP stop valve, shut. Engine anti-icing. On. 
You work in pairs, taking it in turns to do the captain's and co-pilot's jobs. Okay, stand by to take off. Stand by. 85%. All bad checks. S3 building. 80 knots. S3 building both sides. 80 knots. Engine clear. Landing, take off. First power. Right, that was very nice, Steve. Uh, don't put the brakes on, remember. And uh, for you, John, when you're cancelling reverse, come out to the idle position first. And pause. Yeah, that's all right. 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 Yeah, that's all in ones and twos to Shannon to fly the Beale aircraft, the Super VC-10 that we'll have for you. You may be feeling a little apprehensive. Uh, you may think that this is rather a large handful for you to cope with, having come off light aircraft such as the Chipmunks and the Barons down at Hamble. It's an extraordinarily easy aeroplane to land, as you will discover, uh, mainly because the thing is in the landing attitude already, all the way down the approach. All you have to do is to check the rate of descent. As soon as you see it react, pull the power off. And then you do nothing. You just sit there and hold the nose. And then you wait for the applause from the stewardess. This is European Airways announce the arrival of their flight 893 from London. You arrive at Shannon on the west coast of Ireland one Sunday afternoon as two passengers on a normal commercial flight. This is one of the chief training captains, one of the men who has to decide whether two new recruits from the College of Air Training are good enough to be airline pilots or not. He's a man you're never likely to forget. The airplane is airborne in the morning at 7 o'clock. We fly seven days a week, and you will fly every day as a couple until you finish here. As far as landings go, and this is obviously in large measure depends on you yourself, but I would say probably not less than 25 or 30, could be as many as 40. We're not terribly interested in numbers. What we are looking for is proficiency, that you can do it, and above all, consistency. Walking out to the aircraft the first morning can be a pretty sobering experience you realize how far you've come in two years. Not just from Hamble to Shannon, but from Chipmunks to a VC-10. And in a few minutes, you're going to be taking it off, flying it, and landing it yourself. Although you're wearing the uniform of a second officer, you're still not an airline pilot yet. You've got to prove that you can be. No one doubts that you'll be able to fly a VC-10. How well you'll do it is what they're going to find out. This is it. 150 tons. More than 150 feet long and taller than a house. All set for takeoff. It was Pendle's turn first. 
probe going on. Probe check. CPI and what is it? Zero. CPI is set to four degrees. HP stop valve. Off shut. Igniter not required. Are off. Doppler is going on. Transponder is set as required. EO is before takeoff check. Is complete. Right. Stand by for takeoff. Eighty knot. Watching someone else land it for the first time, it looks easy, but you still have to find out for yourself. In the glide slope. Okay. Watch that speed, tending to drop very slightly. 82% biggest trap traps in flying at the falling out speed. Well, let's put on half a unit of trim there. Difficult. Okay, so on the final Those white marks are the touchdown points. Still 400 feet a minute. Okay, correct now. Now further back on the runway. Call the Reverse that wing level. And all the way down the runway. That right wing in hold at level because of a very narrow landing here. Rotate. Very nice. and you lose count. You fly it every day, on into the night. So we turn slowly into wind, it raises the right wing, we hold the wing, level, spoilers. Spoilers, first power, keep the nose wheel on. How many more trips would you say have we got to go? This is, um, keeping him again round figures is about halfway, I would think, could three days, you know, given weather like today, for instance.
all told, you'll probably do more than 40 takeoffs and landings each. But when it's all over, you leave the aircraft at the last time. You know you've flown it well enough to satisfy one of the most experienced pilots in the world. That's what really matters. Now all you need is his word for it in writing. Right, well that completes you, John. Right. Right, and now you, Steve, will just have a run through your paperwork and make sure that it's all done. Instrument rating, as we did the other day, everything okay, signed up. Don't ever fly without your license. It's like a pilot's Bible. You should never leave it behind. You should always know where it is. And remember those magic words on the front of it that says you can use that instead of a passport to return to the United Kingdom. Mm -hmm. This signature will allow you to fly a BC-10 as third pilot. But it's by no means a qualification for life. From now on, you still have to pass performance and medical checks like every other pilot. Or lose your license. And again, don't forget to fill in the front of that. I've no idea where your route flight will be, but generally speaking, the first flights tend to be the longer ones in order to get more sectors. So this is likely to mean uh, they're certainly not Atlantic flights, but they tend to be either to South Africa or to the Gulf, India, Far East. You do go east. First to Bahrain, then to Bombay. But it's not so much where you go that matters as the satisfaction of getting there, of being one of the crew and doing one of the best jobs in the world, and knowing you'll be going on tomorrow from where you left off today. between flights, there's time to relax on the ground like other people. But it's never long before the next flight is due to leave for somewhere else. The uh, sector favorable or unfavorable? Unfavorable sector, one thousand thousand kilos. Mm, well, we'll take flight time fuel on that one. And the flight time? Flight time. Well, I'll see you in about, uh, about uh, 45 minutes. All right, we'll see you when you come up. Fine. Fine. Bye-bye. Bombay, Calcutta, Singapore, and Tokyo. London, Hong Kong, Rome, New York. You visit just about every place on the travel agent's books. You start work in one place and end up in another. There's not many people back here. It's a bit early for early morning. Time change takes a bit of getting used to. Huh? Well, tomorrow we'll be back here again. Yes, indeed. Turn your 13 hours off altogether. At the most. Airport to airport. So I'd get the shops in Singapore and Steve's camera. Check right turn. Right turn checks on the port side. PPI and rudder trims. Zero. Four. HP stop valve. Check. And anti-icing. Off. Igniters. Off. Doppler. Here's Transponder. Complete. Four Number checks. Check completed. Standing by. Standing by. 85. Check full power. Checking. Full power on all four. 80 knots. I think. D1. Drive safe. Positive climb. Gear selected up. Flap stop in the after take up check. There's only one first trip for any pilot. After that, it's different. You may still be many years and several thousands of hours away from the captain's seat. 
You're part of a team. And you're on your way.